Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the show tonight we have Tim Husnudinov. Oh, and that was pretty good. <laughs> getting better all the time. Yes. And Doug Barbieri. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Tim, you're working on uh, cannabis uh, legalization and, uh, and so forth in, in Davis. Less legalization and uh, decriminalization um, since a lot of that's already happened right. um, since uh, last year with and with January 1st of 2018, but, but, but mostly consulting, right. business structuring, development, um, helping nonprofits, uh, basically anything any clientele from any sector asks we have an ability to do either in-house or uh, contracted out. So it's a pretty bu busy, wild space. And Doug, you're the software guru, right? I am. And I currently uh, have a job with uh, a company called Exodus Movement. It's a Bitcoin wallet, effectively. Really? Yes, yeah, so I'm totally in the Bitcoin crypto space. Okay, well, <laughs> that should have been. to tell me how to get, get Bitcoin while it's cheap. Yeah, well, you know, it's <laughs> never too late to <laughs> load up your portfolio. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we've had an interesting couple of weeks in the news. One of the things that happened recently was that uh, the Supreme Court decided, and I use air quotes there, that they decided the uh, gay wedding cake case in Colorado. Tell us what they decided and what they uh, actually did not decide. Well, it sounds to me like it was just a very narrow decision, really applying only just to the baker in question and not really, it wasn't like people try to trumpet it like, it's general and broad, it really isn't, you know? And it doesn't really help us, <laughs> you know, as far as that goes. I mean, it's, I guess you could say it's kind of a win for uh, religious freedom for, uh, you know, uh, this, the First Amendment, but it probably would have been better uh, to have looked uh, perhaps at uh, freedom of association, which they, they don't. Yeah, I mean, the court under Kennedy, Kennedy is famous for making rulings that are uh, split the hair rulings and that invite more cases to come up so we can write more split the hair rulings. Uh, that's that's kind of his, his, his modus operandi. And in this one, he wrote the majority opinion in a 7-2 case, and the opinion basically said that, uh, scenario first, the owner of the cake shop a uh, devout Christian did not want to bake, refused to bake uh, a, a, a gay-themed wedding case for a couple of uh, gay guys that came in and asked for one to be baked. They sued. It went to the Colorado Civil Rights Commission, and the Civil Rights Commission used some very inflammatory, anti-religious language in uh, talking about the case. And as a result of that uh, obvious bias on the part of the commission, that's what the Supreme Court ruled on. They said that because the commission was not, was demonstrably unfair in, in coming to the decision that we're going to decide the basis of the case on that basis. They didn't go to the First Amendment, freedom of speech, uh, cake decorating as a method of free speech. They did not go to to the, uh, the issue of freedom of religion. The, the man has the right to practice his religion uh, however he, uh, he chooses. And most importantly, I think, they did not go to right of association, that the owner of a business has the right to uh, associate with, that is, sell to people that he wants to or not sell to people that he doesn't want to. It's kind of funny that people don't want to talk about those things that aren't specifically mentioned in the, in the uh, Bill of Rights, but the Ninth and Tenth Amendments imply that, well, even if it's not mentioned here. Well, these are. Yeah, the Bill of Rights. exactly. And, and, and this is a, a Supreme Court. Well, actually, wouldn't you, say, wouldn't you say the Fifth Amendment, right? This, no, these are all First Amendment yeah, issues. Yeah, you, you think freedom of association is a First Amendment? It's absolutely. It's part of the, yeah, absolutely. Freedom of association, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all on the First I Amendment. I guess that's true, yeah, because yeah. freedom of religion it sort yeah, of implies. Yeah. Well, you no, know, no, I mean, it's stated. Yeah, you have yeah. the freedom to, you know, to, to, uh, associate. Uh, it's that's part true. Of, it's part of the first. Well, amendment. and I guess that's backed up in the uh, fifth freedom amendment. Freedom of assembly. It's it's a it's a backed up in the fifth amendment that you can't take anybody's liberty away. Well, that's property. A, that's yeah. property. No life, liberty, or property. It's well, the whole yeah. Thing. Okay. Well, so, yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't just take somebody away. No. Well, I mean, there's, but there's the issues yeah. we're talking right. about. Yeah. Are the first amendment issues. Yeah. So, so the yeah. outcome was. The outcome Decent, was but correct, but the rationale. But the rationale was not, was, was not there. It, it, yeah. it just kind of scuttled it to the and side. It doesn't yeah. really help us in a more broad right yeah. freedom yeah. association. It'll it yeah. will encourage more cases of <coughs> of a similar nature to come yeah. forward uh, yeah. going going forward. So it yeah. didn't really decide anything, and it's very it's very disappointing that when you've got seven to two. That you cannot be, uh, you know, I mean, go to a 5 4 decision and be a little bit more substantive. Why go for 7 2 when you're really not deciding anything, which is what the court did in this particular case? They have a large caseload. 
I'm sure uh, they'll get back around to it eventually. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> this will make it larger. And maybe, that's, or maybe that's the goal. That's I, I'm the not goal. sure. Very true. Uh, a second uh, uh, interesting case, again, a civil liberties case, and one that I think is kind of egregious that it has to go to a uh, legislative solution. Terminally ill patients now have, because Congress uh, legislated it, Congress uh, uh, passed a bill unanimously in the Senate in 2017 saying that. Uh, the patients have the right, uh, terminal patients have the right to try experimental medicines. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that 38 states have already passed at the state level. So it's nothing, it's not, they're not really breaking any new ground except for the 12 states where it has not passed yet. 38 states have passed it and uh, passed a right to try. Uh, and uh, the uh, exclusion, of course, is probably even more uh, interesting than, the, than who is included. Right, if you're terminal, you can try any medicine that has passed phase one FDA trials, but has not passed phase two and, and phase three. Phase one basically says this is not gonna, this medicine right. is not going to kill you. Right. Phase two and phase three go to whether it's effective or not, and that those are much more expensive right. uh, tests, double blind, and you know costs millions and millions of dollars. Only the largest drug companies can afford to conduct those kinds of tests. So a whole lot of effective drugs are stuck in the FDA pipeline or never get to, to the FDA pipeline right. simply because it costs way too much to prove their effectiveness. Maybe the problem is the pipeline itself. Well, the, the problem is that the yeah. pipeline or the FDA is in effect controlled by the major pharmaceutical companies. Major pharmaceutical companies who have deep pockets are very interested in getting new blockbuster drugs, but they're very interested in making sure that drugs which might be in competition with their new patented blockbuster drugs never see the light of day. Well, Hence the uh, antipathy toward marijuana-based uh, medicines. Well, they, the uh, they are getting involved in that. Yeah, and eventually, I'm thinking five to 10 years mm -hmm. down the road, we're gonna have a similar situation there. Um, yeah, you might be able to walk into a drugstore yeah. and find something OTC or prescribed, right? But yeah. all the uh, small time, uh, uh, growers and people who've been in the industry, some for decades, uh, won't be able to compete anymore. Well, I mean, right. That's prepping that, for that yeah. is But important. the thing, in, in this particular case, mm -hmm. uh, the, or in this, it's not a case, it's a legislative uh, victory. The thing that's really interesting to me is that if you're not terminally ill, you still can't try right. yeah. a, a, a non-FDA approved medicine. So if you are in great pain, let's say, or if you are you know, bedridden and can't get up, and there's a drug out there that may uh, allow you to Lazarus-like walk again, it's not going to happen because well, I mean, the FDA says, that's, that's no, one of the things you have to say, Mama, maybe, that may, may I? Things, that was one of the things that, that I mentioned when I said just because it's something that's not specifically enumerated, and it's the right to self-medication, which actually isn't in any amendment, but you still it's, have the right. It should be in the ninth yeah, or the 10th. It should be a, yeah. a guarantee by the ninth yeah. and 10th amendment, which exactly. is, that you should be able to medicate however damn well you want to. Why do you need the government's permission to medicate? You know, seriously. Because mm -hmm. the government knows best. Oh, I, of I course. Yeah. Says sarcastically. Politicians yeah. and bureaucrats are the best people to decide this. But it, it was the, and the interesting political yes. question here is, although it passed in 38 states, it passed the Senate unanimously, it was a close vote in the House. Why was it a close vote in the House? Probably the protectionist angle. No, like it was said. very interesting political mm. argument. What okay. happened was, President Trump supported the legislation in his State of the Un Union message back in January. Mm. Once Trump got on board for this legislation, the Democrats, all except for 59 of them, I think it was, they uh, immediately became against the legislation. Well, of course. So it's, it's yeah. tribal purely, politics purely at its worst. Purely political. <laughs> yeah, tribal <laughs> politics at its worst, simply because Trump finally made a good decision. The Democrats couldn't agree with anything that Trump said, even though it's the right thing to do. Well, I mean, isn't it isn't it isn't it the same kind of case like with the immigration, right? You know, uh, Obama made some decisions and did some things and made some orders that uh, were very similar to what Trump did, but it was okay when Obama did it because he had a deep mind. And you have you have you have uh, very uh, skillfully uh, merged <laughs> into our next question. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. speaking of which, saving, <laughs> saving me the trouble of doing so, which is that uh, the Feds have lost, actually lost track of. Uh, nearly, I think it's 1,475 children. That's right. This happened Under the during the Obama That's administration, right. not during the Trump administration. So when, now, when Trump has got his own problems, but under Obama, 1,475 children, mostly adult, or not adult, uh, unaccompanied minors who were apprehended at the border or once they got to the states, 
and put into foster care under HEW, Health and Human, or HHS, Health, Health and Human Services, uh, you know, supposedly pl placed with families or in foster care or whatever, Homeland Security and immigration has lost touch, lost track. Nobody knows where these kids are. They've disappeared into the ether. Now that's probably probably a good thing because if they've disappeared, maybe they're not they're subject, not. That's true. They're not subject to deportation. True. This is true, yeah. Or not going it's to be found and be subject to deportation. In, in a way, this is kind of a common theme in the federal government. Um, whenever there's an inquiry uh, or something very serious threatening a uh, particularly a uh, bureaucratic branch under the executive, uh, bureaucratic agency under the executive branch, we have things like IRS magically losing thousands of hard drives. In, in some ways, Under it's the Tea Party cases. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's, so information is Oops. lost all the time, uh, but yeah. it's supposed to be all centrally Hil located. Hil Hilary's emails. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm not surprised by this, but like you said, I, I didn't consider the angle until now that perhaps that is a good thing, uh, losing people so that the uh, the nanny state doesn't uh, have to look after you and make decisions for you, or uh, or kick you out, or kick you out. Yeah. yeah. So they can seamlessly fold into society and do their thing. Uh, and the government can try to improve its uh, central information services, databases, and all that, so they don't infor information doesn't just walk off. <laughs> but it doesn't stop. Stop obviously with the with the Obama administration. Right. It has continued, and with a vengeance with the Trump administration, because now uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has boldly stated, you know, loud and clear that if you come to the border, if an immigrant family with children comes to the border and presents themselves at the border uh, for asylum or whatever, or, or tries to sneak in, we will separate you from your children. We will put your children, we will incarcerate the parents for, and, and prosecute them, for, or, you know, set them up for deportation. The children, meanwhile, will be sent into the protective custody of some uh, agency, probably Health and Human Services again. Uh, no so there are people, people that, with kids as, yeah. as young as, as toddlers are being separated from, the, from, their, from their kids at the border uh, because yeah. it's the law, according to Jeff Sessions. And technically, he's correct. It is the law. Yeah. The problem is we've got a dumbass law. I mean, <laughs> well. we have a law that says people cannot immigrate to the United yeah. States when we have three point something percent unemployment and we have the lowest in 18 years jobs yeah. that are going begging in whole swaths of industries. We have no reason at all, no reason whatsoever to keep immigrants out of this country now, well, if we ever did. There, None. There's, there's, a, there's a, a, the protectionist angle. The protectionist that, angle you know. is nonsense because the protectionist angle says, okay, we're protecting American jobs. Mm -hmm. What happens if an immigrant comes to the United States and takes a job? They earn money. What do they do with that money? They spend that money. Who do they spend that money with? I'm not People who are nonsense. working for other companies, <laughs> they are creating other jobs I know you're playing devil's advocate. I've, well, the, and the reason why it's the reason why it's there is because of fear, and that you you say this American jobs like actually everybody's scared, and that sounds good if you're a politician saying we're here to protect. Yeah, if jobs. you don't take it from beyond that, but for every job an immigrant takes, they create another uh, one or two jobs exactly. through their spending or through their investment. Well, I always one like to ask, the other. These, like these aren't decisions made uh, yeah. with with cold logic. Oh, these no. are emotionally yeah. charged it's decisions, a, yeah. and that fear yeah. platform, yeah. that fear understanding, yeah. isn't just sweeping America, right? Yeah. Isn't just holding on to that we're seeing in Europe and other oh, places. Oh yeah, in Europe it's so. uh, in Italy. Uh, in Italy uh, the uh, two uh, parties, who f uh, a populist party from the right and a populist party from the left joined forces to form a government, <laughs> both of them being anti-immigrant as their main uh, platform and anti-euro. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, and probably will Good destroy the European Union in the process, which may or may Well, you know what's funny thing. is there, there really is a, a like, I, I, I visited Hungary uh, last, a couple of weeks ago, mm. and I had a discussion with a woman who was about my age, so she was old enough to remember communism, and I asked her what was, would you like, you know, what, what's communism like, what was communism like? She's like, absolutely horrible. I mean, she just had nothing good to say about it. But then I said, I think it's great that you can go to the store and just buy anything you want. And she's like, oh, that's right, but consumerism must stop. And she started getting on the soapbox. And I just went, huh. well, wasn't that what communism was created for? I mean, this is the sort of thing, like, keep immigrants out. Well, what are you going to wind up with doing that? Keep people in, you know? You're going back to the old school, <laughs> you know, the old they're, communist they're, hard line. They're going you know? back to what's comfortable, what's known. Yeah, um, I guess. You, you look like, you look at the uh, democratic developments in my home country of Russia, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have any experience over two or 300 years of slowly progressing to a more democratic, more republic uh, sort of system. They just flipped on the dime and upon the collapse. It was peaceful. 
had no experience with real capitalism, right? So that or, term, or with real democracy. Yeah, but now they, they all of them lovingly accept the term managed democracy. And that's what the government even calls it too, right? So it's democracy, but under the veil of uh, a, a, a benevolent uh, government that will make sure that the right decisions are made. We will let you choose between A and B, C is off limits? Is that kind of what you're talking right, about? Right, there's just gentle suggestions for things. And the, and the decisions that the establishment wants to be made are always made. Sometimes by a simple majority, by votes, sometimes by a super majority. There's still some ballot issues there, but nevertheless, that's what they're comfortable with. They're willing to to sacrifice certain things that they haven't really experienced before, like they a concept of the liberty that we know and love here in, in the states. They don't have the same understanding. So a lot of them that I talk to are are more than comfortable to accept what the status quo is there, rather than to kind of open things up and, and allow for and change. And would you say that kind of like uh, I don't know if Putin himself is doing this, but there's kind of this move to whitewash communism, whitewash the old days of the Soviet Republic, and kind of say, hey, it wasn't so bad. Rehabilitate you know, the image. Kind of, yeah, they're trying to. It's a nostalgic thing, okay. and it's a it's a point of pride. Um, and when when you have problems all around you, right, you can point inwardly or to certain things to redirect the attention, and we can say, look at our well, legacy. Yeah, and that's uh, most of the nativist yeah. anti-immigrant movement is uh, a uh, magician's trick of you know look over there. Uh, right. You know, you're uncomfortable with your life because you can't save any money or whatever. Uh, and oh, it's not your fault. It's it's you know these immigrants coming and taking your your factory job or the uh, the job landscaping a garden, which you would never do anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit like the 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 idea of tariffs and uh, you know like the Smoot Halley Act. You know when the well we have to bring back uh, American jobs, so you can't buy you know products from abroad. It's the same kind of thing. Well, that will restart the industry. No, <laughs> you're just going to keep that out of the hands of the people that can't afford Trade it. protection is just it's just sanctions yeah. on Americans. That's all it, it is. It winds up being and you know and the same thing. And immigrants, you could say the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You know you need the the uh, you need downward pressure on 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 labor prices. We need more people to be able to come in. We need to be able to pe those people to come in to these low paying jobs and be able to take them that nobody else wants to do. And know? the nice thing about another nice yeah. thing about immigration is that the, the more people that we have from the Russian community, from the Italian community, from the uh, uh, Vietnamese community is a really good example over the last thirty or forty years. From the Chinese community, the more people that we have from other countries that are living here, the less is the op is the uh, the likelihood that we'll go to war with them and uh, i think korea is a real good example of how never thought there aren't that. too many koreans living yeah. in the united states but there are an awful lot of uh, there's an awful lot of animosity between north korea and the united states back in january kim jong-un and president trump were changing rocket man insults with each other uh, and uh, threatening to blow each other to smithereens with nuclear warfare then Kim got into a discussion with the president of South Korea, who of course would be collateral damage in any war between the United States and, and North Korea. I mean, Seoul is right on the border. They would be the ones that would lose. They have the only valuable real estate on the whole Korean peninsula, mm. really. They would, be the, they would suffer if there were any uh, hostilities in the region. Oh, yeah. And uh, this, the leader of South Korea very wisely said to Kim, cool it. Uh, and he did, <laughs> and he actually, Kim actually, uh, with Western media looking on, destroyed his nuclear facilities as, a, as an olive branch for a summit uh, between the United States and uh, North Korea, between Kim and, and, and Trump. In the meantime, Trump appointed John Bolton as his uh, national defense advisor. Uh, I don't know if you know John Bolton very well, but this is the guy oh, yes. with the big bushy mustache who has been fomenting and apologizing for war ever since the first Iraq war, the second Iraq war, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Syrian war, Libya, Somalia, you name it. If there's a war going on, he's in favor of it. Uh, he's been uh, humping for a, a war with Iran for, for many, many years. This is a guy, a neocon, who thinks war is a good thing and that the United States should be running an empire and doing it however it damn well pleases. Well, let's give him a rifle this and put guy, him on the front lines. I think mm -hmm. very clearly worked to sabotage the Trump Kim summit because yeah. what he said was we're going to make this, we're going to make Libya. The uh, the model of this of this yeah this is how we're going to do just like we did with we're Libya do it just yeah. like we did with yeah, Libya exactly and for those of you who don't remember recent history Libya 
because they wanted to get off from underneath uh, sanctions, Muammar Gaddafi decided to give up his <coughs> nuclear weapons research program. And he did. He got rid of his nuclear research uh, entirely. Uh, that was maybe in the early 2000s, about five or six years later, he did one other thing, which, was, which, was, which got him in trouble. He said, we want to have a gold back Libyan oh, currency. No, 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 no. And France didn't like that <coughs> because that would destroy the franc in northern Africa. So between that and the, the fact that he was like no longer <laughs> armed, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, said, "I think we, you know, we can we can have a, a little fun here." And so they supported NATO, uh, supported uh, they supported they supported the civil war brought about by rebels supported by NATO air power. Yeah, and he ev and eventually, uh, Gaddafi was killed, uh, killed, and uh, after being mutilated. That's the Libya model. And that's what Bolton was proposing to, to Kim. Yeah. And Kim said, no, no, I don't think so. And so t t Trump tweeted, well, I don't, the talks are off. Of course, that was probably totally uninformed on, on Trump's part, which most of his decisions seem to be. But lately, he's back again. Yeah. The, the summer's back on again. And I don't know. First time in 18 years. It's probably who the last person that Trump talked to said, hey, this is, might not be a bad idea. Sure. Sure. The first time in 18 years since uh, the era of Bill Clinton and the uh, 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 Madeleine Albright, uh, a high-ranking, supposedly, or an assistant, um, someone in the inner circle to, to Kim Jong-un, visited the White House, I believe it was last week, um, and then the decision was reversed. Yeah. It's back on. So uh, what's, what's interesting to me is uh, not just like the historical precedent for something like that, but, but how quickly through mediums like Twitter we see these giant decisions being made that will be committed to the presidential public record. Um, who knows what he's going to tweet uh, ahead of the June 12th date? Singapore, right? Well, so. hopefully, I mean, it, it makes <laughs> common sense that it's better to have countries negotiating with each other and talking to each other than shooting uh, nuclear weapons or, or conventional weapons at each other. That makes a whole lot more sense. What makes even more sense, if governments get out of the way and let people in North Korea interact with people in America, let people interact with people in America. And that's countries. part of lifting the sanctions, too. You know. uh, absolutely. Yeah. Get rid of the sanctions, yeah. get rid of trade barriers, get rid of the uh, uh, travel barriers, get rid of the uh, reasons why yeah. people can't deal yeah. with each other on a person-to-person -person basis. Exactly. And we probably will get along just fine. Well, it's like Jefferson said, you know, friends with all and entangling alliances with none. I think that was Washington, but yes. I thought it was, oh, really? Yeah, it was their well address. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> Too many good quotes. I could be, I could be wrong. I, 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 thought it was, I thought it was a Jefferson Jefferson could have said that. I think he, I'm sure he did, but yeah. I don't know. Sure, he repeated he it sure, at least, He sure right? felt that way. <laughs> well, then he got in office, but okay. Are you a betting <laughs> man, either one of you? Do you bet on sports? Because you've been doing it illegally all these years, if you have. But now you can bet on who will win the uh, Super Bowl, and you can do, uh, you know, not be at the track, and you can do it legally, or not be in Nevada, and you can do it legally. Because up until the tenth, uh, up until the uh, recent Supreme Court decision, if you placed a bet on Major League Sports, Major League Baseball, Major League Football, college sports, or, you know, basically any, any contested sports uh, contest. If you made a bet outside of Nevada, which was grandfathered out of this law, uh, you God, were guilty of a, of a crime, probably a felony. Uh, now, uh, the Supreme Court has rediscovered the Tenth Amendment. They've said, okay, the Tenth Amendment says that this is something where we don't have any jurisdiction. People have the right to place a friendly wager if they want to. Ron Paul would be proud. <laughs> Victimless consensual crimes, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah, it was May 14th, the decision. Yeah. And uh, the, the act is called the Professional Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992. Uh, so and it was overruled. It was overruled, yeah. And uh, I think one of the quotes that... And the interesting thing about it is, is that all of, the, all of big sports lobbied against it. All of big sports filed amica. Uh, a, friend the, a, friend yeah. of, a friend of the court briefs against overtur overturning, overturning this, they, this law. They, they all wanted to keep the um, protectionism. Wow, how about that? Yeah, they all, they all uh, wanted. To, you know, no, 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 no betting going on this because no, they, it has they, to be with us. I think the only concerns they raised was uh, they want to uh, uh, still oversee, have oversight um, in cases where the games are rigged or rigged or some other fraudulent yeah, activities going on. But uh, everything else is fair game. But uh, Speaking about the Tenth Amendment, also, uh, how about that uh, that announcement made this morning by Senators Gardner and Warren and the bipartisan uh, group, including some other Tell us about that. Cong uh, some some congressmen from the House as well, um, proposing the States Act. 
uh, which is one of the first acts of its kind that will allow states that have uh, uh, regulatory systems in place for legalized cannabis, medicinal or adult use, to be exempt from the Controlled Substances Act. Big decision. Happened this morning, uh, and uh, it's, it's following the negotiations that uh, President Trump had with Senator Gardner uh, a few months ago, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, blocking uh, nominations, uh, Supreme Court nominations, uh, or, or federal court nominations where Gardner... Oh, okay, so Gardner said we, we, we will quit blocking uh, nominations if you give us this, if you, if you, if, if if you'll you find this? If you support a bipartisan measure to, mm -hmm. to legalize or free the weed, as some people in the industry say, still say, um, and Trump gave him his word, and now we're seeing the results of this finally. So, uh, well, that's interesting because the you know, marijuana, as as you guys know, is still illegal. It's a controlled substance yeah. at the federal Schedule level, one. which means Schedule One controlled mm -hmm. substance, mm -hmm. not usable for any purpose whatsoever, including medical, uh, yeah. including medical, including recreation, everything, uh, and a felony uh, mm -hmm. at the federal level. Now, uh, even though it's legal in what thirty some states, now. It's uh, if that bill pass, if the states bill passes, that that would change. Absolutely, it, it basically exempts states from. It would from be very similar to the repeal of prohibition. Right. The repeal of prohibition didn't say that alcohol was legal everywhere. It uh. said that states could write their could own decide. states or local. So we still have dry counties. And yeah, things. still have yeah. dry counties in Texas. I yeah. used to live in one. It, yeah. was, a, it was a real, it was a real trip. Um, and at state stores like up in, uh, 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 like up in Oregon, they got, yeah. they have. You can't buy hard alcohol in the stores. You have to go to a special store. I uh, live in a town in, in West yeah. Texas where hmm. beer and wine were legal. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could go to a bar, a beer or a wine bar, and, and, and drink all you wanted to. But you couldn't, you couldn't drink hard liquor. Yeah. But you could go to a package store and buy hard liquor. That was okay. Or you could go to the next yeah. county and, 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 and uh, not drink anything. Yeah. Or you could go to the next county in the other direction and you could, you could buy whatever you wanted right. or wherever. Uh, which you know made a whole lot of sense as far as drinking and driving is concerned. <laughs> I mean, they actually had in this dry county they had drive-through liquor stores. <laughs> That's really I funny. kid you not. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, one last American. mention of ICE: a pizza guy was detained, or yeah, w was detained by ICE immigration and uh, uh, authorities while he was trying to deliver a pizza at an army base. You, you know that, that and this I read this one and it just it just made my blood boil. Uh, here's a guy who had been coming to the same. Uh, was it a? It was army just base. a. It was an army base, right? Yeah. Same army base. This this. He knew the sergeant. He'd been delivering pizza to this guy for what months? I mean, a long time. And then one day, his higher up said, "We have to detain you." And the next thing, the guy knows that he's he's being detained. And then they start processing his thing, and they find a, an outstanding IC warrant, and they're deporting him. You know, to back to Ecuador. Yeah. Yeah. Low-hanging fruit? Yeah, and, and it's even the sergeant came forward and said, don't deport, this guy's a good guy. Because nope, this is rules and regulations. And, this, and this is the law. And that's the law. According <laughs> to Jeff Sessions, he's right, unfortunately. That's the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint, www.accesshockey.org, YouTube, Facebook, and cable channel all over the place. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Mm -hmm.